What's going on, guys? Welcome back. I'm your host, Luke Humphreys. We've got another podcast for you. Make sure you're subscribed. Drop a like as well before we get this started. But today, I'm chilling in Arizona, and I happen to be at Ricky Wysocki's house. Mr. Wysocki, this is a nice pad. Yeah, it's really nice. I just I just closed on it December 8th, and really, uh, you know, enjoying the homeowner life. And it's beautiful weather, as you can see in Arizona here. Dude. It's 70, 75, and sunny. Yeah. Most days in the, in the winter months, so... It's nice to be able to be outside. I just got done playing pickleball, playing disc golf, doing all kinds of fun outdoor activities here in Arizona. Stuff you can't do. I left Dallas to come here straight from an ice storm. I stayed for three days. This is incredible weather comparatively. It's it's amazing, man. Was this like the house something that you knew you wanted to do in the off season? Yeah, this off season was the kind of the off season I was targeting to really to get a place. And you know, I feel like this is a time in my life where I feel like I'm, I'm in a spot where I can, I can, you know, obviously afford a house and, mm-hmm. and everything. I feel like, yeah, I found the right spot. I've been traveling long enough to see a lot of the cool places in the country and it just fits my lifestyle really well. The weather's yeah. perfect here during the off season months when I'm here Yeah, and then it starts getting hot. But by the time it starts getting hot, I'm, I'm gone and I'm on tour. So I don't have to totally. endure the 115 degree uh, summer months. Dude, we get to be in Vermont during those months. It's exactly. It's crazy how it works out. Scottsdale is a great area though. Did you know you wanted this portion or like, you know, the Phoenix area has got a lot of good golf. It's got some of your friends as well in it. It's got a bunch of people. Yeah. I mean, Adam Hammes, you got AB, Drew, uh, old school touring pro buddy, Devin Owens. So there's just a lot of people yeah. here. I think there's simply because of the weather. It's mm-hmm. just it's just so perfect. It doesn't rain. It's almost, you know, I've, I think I can count on my hands the, the amount of times it's rained this winter. <laughs> so yeah. on one hand, I think. So, yeah, it's 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 been good. And, and I think that Arizona's got a lot going on. You got the Super Bowl this year. You got the waste management going on, the Bear Jackson. So there's a lot of all other events going on during the offseason to – to go have some fun and just kind of, you know, enjoy life even outside of disc golf and, and just recoup the mind and get ready to slowly build that fire back up come yeah. uh, come Vegas. You guys just got done observing some pickleball the last weekend. Whatever. Hogan, go sit down. Go sit down. <laughs> yeah, pickleball, the best in the world, are right here in Scottsdale just randomly, a sport that you're getting into. Yeah, I've, I've been really enjoying it. It's good cardio. I've been playing with Tristan and Ezra. Adam and AB also play. Who's so we're kind of – uh, I I gotta say I gotta say I'm probably the best so far out of my group. Yeah, I'm You're probably the best. Competitive. Um, me and Tristan not. played singles the other day. I beat him. So what was the score? <laughs> it was pretty competitive. I think it was uh, you played to eleven and it was thirteen eleven. You got to win by two. So well, that's what you need. Someone mm-hmm. who can push you a little bit for sure. What do so, you feel like are the similarities between pickleball and disc golf? Actually, a lot. You'd be surprised. So. It's very, it's kind of similar to, to ping pong, I would say. It's kind of a mix between ping pong and tennis, but I'd think it, I think it's closer to ping pong. Mm. But there's actually a lot of movements that, like, like the backhand mm. is kind of like just like a disc golf throw and then the forehand. So you're basically like going through the, the repetition. Yeah. yeah. So you just obviously have a racket in your hand. And I was, I was making a comment the other day. I thought it was funny because whenever you hold the racket, like a, like a pickleball racket, it's just like a disc. You got to like go through your swing plane with the racket in your hand, mm-hmm. just like you would when you grab a disc. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like when so you it's pretty it funny. Up, you're like thinking, yeah, you're like going through the motion stuff. again, just like a golf swing. Yeah, it's funny. One of the hardest parts of, I've found about pickleball is how small the racket is. It feels like it should be on, like you're on a tennis court. So it feels very similar to tennis, but it, you just got to be so much closer. So, and it's such your fast twitch muscles have Ooh, to be on point. Time. The reaction time, yeah. And the sweet spot, like you said, is a lot smaller than, mm-hmm. than, yeah, I mean, the racket may be, let's say, yay big, but the sweet spot's, you know, like maybe only the size of one or two pickleballs. So you really got to be on point with uh, hitting the center of the club face right there. So you got to watch the best players in the world. Oh. Over the last couple <laughs> I of I hope days. he doesn't shoot at the cameras. All right, let's just pull a timeout real All quick. All right. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. <laughs> Are we going to get lucky and it's not going to hit us or what? I feel like it. All right. Other than the, just the sound, maybe? <laughs> yeah, we'll pause it for a sec. <laughs> I just hope it doesn't, like, start spinning and shooting over here. Scare me. we got to water the grass. You know how it goes, guys. What do you think? I don't think it's going to hit the cameras. We might have to pause it. You're good. Okay. Or That's so funny. I'm well, just making sure that the focus is That's kind of funny, actually. <laughs> yeah. It won't last forever. No. Right? no. I think everything is actually, it looks kind of cool. Okay. Will the sound to be all right? Like, will it be too much in our uh, in our microphones? There's going to be, like, a low hissing probably, huh? Um, I mean, listen to the headphones. Okay. Sorry, yeah, you're good. 
That's pretty funny. <laughs> and the funny thing is, I don't even know how to turn them off because I don't know where the timer's at. <laughs> it's so because I'm so new. How's it sound? Not bad. Okay, cool. I feel like yeah. Where I was you? definitely thinking it was gonna spin around and start shooting the cameras. I was gonna be like, yeah, oh yeah, shoot. yeah. Like one of those. But that, 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 that's good. <laughs> All right, call it good, man. All right. Nice and easy. <laughs> All right, guys, don't worry about the sprinkler system. I don't. I haven't learned when it comes on and when it goes off. <laughs> Still It'll learning the new house. <laughs> It'll go away. It's not going forever. All right, back to uh, – I had a good question, though, for you on, on the pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> All kinds of distractions. Hoagie's tripping over the cords and everything. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. It's a good question, though, in my mind, I feel like, because um, I want to know it. You got to witness the best players in the world playing pickleball. What made them the best? Like, what was it, what was it that they were doing that made them so much better? It's funny, actually. You can, for me, just being an op, obviously a top professional player in disc golf, is you can just tell that they put in the work. It's not, I mean, obviously most people from the surface, it looks like, oh, they're amazing players. But it's like all the practice and, det- and, and effort and everything that they, time they spent dedicating to their craft mm-hmm. really showed off in the tournament that I was at. Yeah. And you could tell that they had hit a million pickleball shots, worked on every spin, worked on their timing, worked on everything. Mm-hmm. And so... That's something that I really respect as being a disc golfer that puts in tons of time mm-hmm. in dedicating my craft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the reaction speed's absolutely absurd, man. They're only standing, what, how, do you know the width of the kitchen? Yeah, it's not very far. I would say they're probably 10 feet away. 10 feet away, popping this plastic ball back and forth. Like, and, uh, yeah, there's all kinds, I mean, techniques. So the, the basic technique is you want to keep the paddle in front of you so that way you can get to the ball quicker. As soon as you try to reach back, it's too late, and you're not going to have the reaction time. So you got to keep the paddle in front of you, whoops, and uh, make those quick, you know, fast twitch muscle movements with the uh, with hitting it back and guy. forth. Yeah, <laughs> he's got it down. Yeah, you can give a clinic on pickleball. <laughs> Taking any money off of these guys? Yeah, I mean, there's there's obviously levels to the sport. I played with I played earlier today, and there's a guy. Uh, so it's like a, so they call five o. Okay. So there, that's basically like a thousand rated pickleballer. Oh. It's called five o. There's four o. And uh, it's basically like a handicap system in pickleball. Gotcha. So you can basically gauge your skill set. You know, if you're a newer player, you'd probably be like a 3-0. I'm probably like a 4-0 or something right mm-hmm. in that range. And that's just basically determines your skill level when you're playing tournaments and when you're trying to find good games with, uh, sk- you know, skill set that's that similar to yours. There doesn't seem like a lot of variance. If, like, a beginner is a 3 and a pro is like a 5. Well, there's halves, too. So, like, 3, oh. there's 3.5, yeah. there's 4, 4.5, four and, and then there's 5, and then... Five would basically be like the best players in the world. I've played a yeah. little bit. I'm probably like a three point five six. Three point six. Okay, <laughs> I'm a little better than three. Okay, <laughs> probably yeah. Right between three point five and four. I saw you playing with like because uh, you're gonna have a vlog coming out that Isaac went and shot some film. And I saw you playing with like a 50, 60 year old man that was pretty solid. Yeah, there's some studs. There are some great players. Doesn't matter how you know something you it, can do into your age. And, and, yeah, it's all about – it's a lot about court awareness, being being aware of, you know, strategical moves and strategical hits based on where the opponents are standing on the court. Uh, all about angles. I mean, that's where, you know, the old – the older players really see the court and they know where they want to hit the ball, so they're hitting these funky angles that make it really hard to hit back. Yeah. So it ends up being a game of the mind, similar to disc golf. It really is. It's very mental, and you know, there's. Don't get me wrong. There's. It's crazy. I've been playing with 70, 80 year old um, guys and girls that just have these ridiculous fast twitch muscles, and they're just like bing, 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 like back and forth, and you're like, what? It's super impressed. It's crazy. And being able to hit the soft shot is especially good in. Pickleball. It's like the one thing I couldn't do. Yeah. So the net play in uh, around the kitchen is probably the most important part of the game. Yeah. The dinks over the net, back yeah. and forth. So getting the touch to just barely clear the ball over the net yeah. is the most important because if you if you clear the net too much and give your opponent height on the net, mm-hmm. then they're just gonna smash it back. Smack. So you gotta play this just you know inch or two over the net, which is really hard to get when you're yeah, first yeah. learning. Yeah. It's easy to hit it right into the net. So the touch is tough. And, and like I said, if you play with a good player and you're hitting the ball too high over the net on the returns, they're just going to smash it back and score every time. So it's, it's, it's tough. It may just be me, but I feel like there's this almost like a rivalry between disc golf and pickleball because we're both newer, newer sports that are rising very quickly throughout the ranks. And it's almost like a, who's going to make it into the mainstream First or whatever, pickleball or disc golf. Do you feel like 
that. Yeah, there's that a little bit, kind of that, you know, that feeling, I guess, mm. within the pickleball community. But there's a lot of disc golfers that play pickleball and a lot of people that play both. I know. Yeah. I go to the pickleball courts and people are like, oh, Ricky, hey, what's up? I didn't know you played pickleball. Nice. So that's pretty cool to, to have the crossover there. Yeah. But yeah, it's 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 been it's been eye opening going to some tournaments, playing at the local yeah. local courts, and really meeting some new people. It's a it's a fun new uh, world to get my feet wet in. That's cool, man. Yeah. All right, switching subjects a little bit. <clears throat> the last time we talked was at the DD Warehouse. You had just signed a four year, four million dollar deal. You were like on a helicopter that day, legs hanging out, <laughs> rap video style. <laughs> that was a fun day. That was a year ago now. You've uh, how how was your How's your life changed because of that deal and, and that day and whatever? Yeah, I mean, obviously, the, you know, you you guys are watching it right now. They got the backyard. I'm able to host Luke and ho- host the the GK guys. And you know, like like I've told a lot of people, for me, getting a house and like you said with that deal is you know goes hand in hand with getting a house. They, you know, dining with this and their contract allowed me to to get a spot and 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 open up the opportunity to become a homeowner. Mm-hmm. And and so that's super important to me. But then also for me, I'm a disc golfer at, at heart and deep down. So I know how it is to t- travel, to grind and all that. So I've got my buddy Corey Ellis coming later tonight. And obviously Luke, Albert, Tom, Tristan Tanner, uh, Adam comes over if we do steak cookouts. So I'm just inviting the disc golf community to, to stay over and enjoy the house just as much, you know, as I am, mm-hmm. you know, because I think, you know, that's the important thing about disc golf. It's so tight-knit, and it comes full circle. I've traveled and stayed with other people throughout the tournament years that I've that I've come come up the scene, and I want to give back and have them come over and buy them steak and have them jump in my pool and just enjoy all the stuff that I can enjoy. And I think that's, you know, satisfying for me just as much as me enjoying my own house is hosting other people and allowing them to come over. Are there some people early on in your touring life that were – like your safe haven, the spot that you went and stayed at that could be examples for you? Like, are you, are you thinking about anybody as you're, like, doing this, becoming that person, hosting? And Yeah, I mean, I think that there's the – hosts obviously change throughout the years. You'll yeah. you'll find a host where you'll stay with for a couple of years. And, and and even when – if people, you know, don't actually come out to, to stay, you just – you know, it's nice to be able to say – send them that message. But, yeah, I got a house in Arizona. You guys have put me up at, let's say, a Jonesboro Open. Like, I have a family I've stayed with. And I message them like, hey, if you ever want to come out to Arizona, I got you. I got a room for you. Whole family's welcome to come over. And uh, just being able to do that and show the effort, making the effort to, to you know, that all their time and effort they spent hosting me over the years, it doesn't go on, doesn't go unnoticed. And that's yeah. that's important to me is, you know, just, you know, showing, showing mm-hmm. people love where you come from. And yeah. they gave me the opportunity to feel comfortable in their home yeah. and build my name, build my career. And so, yeah, it's only fair to, to give it back. Totally. So you got the crib. What else? What what other what other things have you bought? Yeah, so I've got a new truck. I got I sold the van. Okay. So I got I got a Ford F two fifty King Ranch. I was I bought that. It's a twenty seventeen. So yeah. it's not it's brand new to me, but it's not brand new overall. It's large. It is. It's a diesel <laughs> diesel truck. It's large. It's got the sideboard where you got to step up to get in. So it's pretty yeah. tall. It's a little lifted. Comfy though. Yeah, it's comfy. It's got massage seats for those long drives on tour. I heard that might have been the sales pitch. Too. <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was the kicker. Yes, it was. I was thinking like, hey, if we're driving 10, 12 hours from Emporia to California. I guess it's further than that, but those long drives are really yeah. going to come in clutch. We got to go from Jonesboro to California this year. Yeah, that's more like 30-something, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, massage seats. Will yeah. Be All right, car. You got uh, the plunge system, Yeah, obviously. so I got the plunge. So the, the they, they I mean, sent me. They sent talk me, about that, yeah. So, yeah, the plunge the company, I have a buddy that works for them, and, and he he saw me posting a, tons of ice bath content and was, was able to hook me up with the plunge. Ooh. And so, yeah, if you're a disc golfer and you're into ice baths, sick. definitely check them out. It's uh, it's expensive, but you know it's changed my life for the better. With my health and wellness routine, it's really up to, up to my game and allowed me to really open my eyes when it comes to like health and wellness. And yeah. ice bath is just one of the many things that I do to just optimize my health mm-hmm. you know, all year thing, round. It's an amazing piece of machinery too. Really cool, man. Yeah, it, it so it regulates the temperature. You can basically, you know, it has a, a machine that regulates the temperature. You can move it up and down and, and basically have fresh, uh, filters the water and cools the water yeah. all in one. And, and so it's nice to have, have that available for when I need it. Yeah, you got that thing plugged in like literally right there outside the bedroom too. So you can wake up. Out of the bed, jump right in there. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like a crazy thing. I got in it. It is, 
is cold. Yeah, that's part of the initiation. If you guys didn't know, is when you come to the sake compound, you gotta you gotta jump in the ice bath to initiate yourself, and then you're good to go. <laughs> it doesn't last forever. No, <laughs> five minutes, then you can somewhere. enjoy the house however you want. <laughs> I can't believe you do it all the time. It, it's really cool, man. And like you say, it honestly it comes down to your mind too. I yeah, guess. yeah, it's really just mental training. I mean, I think the mental, obviously, the physical. The physical, you know, improvements are there and the physical things that, it, you know, does to your body with, you know, improving blood flow, all that stuff that's there. And then on top of that, the mental side, the mental training, just like, like you said, forcing yourself to go in there for that five minutes, it makes the whole rest of the day easy. Cause you're like, Oh, I just jumped into ice bath, you know, 40, 50 degree water for five minutes. Like the rest of the day is going to be smooth sailing. Yeah, man. And so it's something about it that really just makes you feel chill and have energy, smooth energy throughout the day. Right. It's not like you like doing it. No one actually yeah. likes doing it. But afterwards, it's a feeling of accomplishment, feeling of, of beating something, owning something. Exactly. And staying consistent with it, just like anything, just like you would working out. If you go to the gym every day for a month, a couple months, you feel accomplished. Like, hey, I stuck with it and did it. Yeah. Same thing with an ice bath. Like, hey, it, it sucked every day for that month, but I did it for that month, and I feel good, and I feel mm -hmm. like – you just build that confidence, the mental confidence. Because yeah. the physical confidence comes on the disc golf course. Mm -hmm. And then the next side of that is the mental. Mm -hmm. And that's um, that's really where that comes in. For sure, man. Not giving yourself an out. Just deciding you're going to do it. And yeah. Following through with what you laid out. All right. Talk about, uh, what about this 23? Yeah, so we got some new changes coming in. Obviously, I've got a new tour manager. Yeah. So Ari, is has she mo she's moved on. We've basically just mutually agreed to... To move on, and uh, she's back in California. She's got a job, and so she's she's doing good. Uh, a lot of people that miss the here in the woos. Yeah, the, the, she'll be missed, no <laughs> doubt. She was uh, high energy, yeah. and uh, I'm thankful for all the woos she gave me and support yeah. she's done. She's changed the game, obviously, as far as you know, being a tour manager. For and sure. she's uh, was you know I think the Set first the one really yeah. uh, that on, on tour that took the chance to mm -hmm. quit her job and come out on tour and support me. I think it was, you know, it was funny in Vegas. I think this was like five, six years ago. She came to the tournament just as a total spectator. And she was like, I can't believe you don't have anyone helping organize your life with Airbnb planning with uh, points of contact for sponsors, emailing, just basically be doing everyday stuff that, um, that she was surprised I didn't have anyone doing that. And she's like, I think I can help you with that. I'm like, all right, we'll do a trial run. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was like 2017 or 2018, 2019, somewhere in there. She came out and did a trial run and it went well. She's really good at organizing. So I think that was, you know, a trait that she had that was really good. She organized the van. She organized my life. And I could just go out there and go week in and week out. And she had the, pl the schedule already planned out. Hey, we're going to Vegas. Then we're going to Waco. Then and everything's already lined up. Just got to show up, yeah. practice, do my thing. Right. And um, and so it was just a really good teamwork. And it's definitely a bummer that, that she's gone. But um, I got Fern now, Emerson's mm -hmm. old tour manager. He's going to be helping me out. And we still, we still chat with Ari. She's got a lot of knowledge that has uh, she's accumulated over the years oh man yeah she's and the best yeah honestly, so she man. did a great job and you know like i said we're we're still friends and everything yeah. um she just got a separate opportunity in california that that she's pursuing so uh so yeah fern will be taking okay. over yeah and fern uh, seems like a great dude too on top of things as well yeah he's he's Which a hard worker need, that, yeah that to organize definitely so he's a you know the biggest you know he's got a lot of good qualities but one of the one of the great qualities is he's a hard worker. You know, yeah. he's waking up early. He's you know saying, "Hey, Rick, let's. What do you think about this Airbnb? Yeah. You know, putting stuff in front of my face. I think that's the mm -hmm. biggest thing. So obviously, I'm I get dragged in a lot of different directions, but he prioritizes things and says, "Hey, you need to do this. Hey, you need to get license plates for your car, so we're not driving around with a expired tag. That kind of stuff." Mm -hmm. And just all those little moving parts that you wouldn't think about, because those things add up and take away time for me. Spending back out here, you know, whether it's working out or doing ice baths, that may not directly pertain to disc golf, but it does. Yeah. Even when, even when, you know, I'm not on the course, it pertains to it, you know, making me mentally stronger and physically stronger in the gym. And, and so just taking time away from that, you know, it takes me a step back from what I want to do. I want to be the best disc golf in the world. So my tour manager slot really helps me mm -hmm. do that. I think that people are starting to follow suit too. Like you said, Ari and yourself, you were the first ones to have that kind of relationship in disc golf. And I, I see more and more people doing it nowadays. Just the the load that's lifted off of you, so that you can just do what you do best: yeah. smash putts and play disc golf. Definitely, and and I think that you know it's, it fits his lifestyle too. He enjoys traveling. He enjoys being around the disc golf scene, and and so I think it's just a you know if you get the mm -hmm. right person, it's a good fit for 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 both parties. And I think that 
yeah, it's going to be good. And I'm, you know, I'm excited for other people to hopefully adopt the same thing and make their lives easier and, yeah. and see the benefits from that. Yeah, for sure. I think you'll see that, that people are going to start doing that. So he'll also be like what, driving around and stuff. Yeah, that's he'll huge. be, yeah, he's a great cook too. I mean, he cooks really, really good food. So, I mean, that's the thing about the tour manager. It's more like, it's more like a life manager. You know, yeah. he's, he's point of contact for my, you know, for my sports agent, Schaefer Sports, mm-hmm. you know, tax tax people. You know, we're renting out this place to Airbnb, so he's going to be yeah. the point of contact for my property manager. So all that stuff mm-hmm. because that's all just sidetracking me from the tunnel vision of, yeah. you know, practice putting, pra- the grind of the disc golf tour. Yeah, so talk about the tournaments. You're going to hit, I, I'm guessing, all the elites and majors, but then some silver series or what? Yeah, so I definitely, you know, obviously with me – over the years, I've kind of just, I've played a lot of events, and I, you know, I really want to hone in on the events that I enjoy playing, and I think that's important to me. So I, and obviously all the elite series to accumulate points, try to win another points title, and try to, you know, work my way up the ranks, and and try to give myself another opportunity to win to win tour championships. So mm-hmm. developing my schedule, it's it's all about that. That's yeah. really what you know what I'm looking at, and so I think I I got a plan my schedule so that way I'm not playing too many tournaments in a row to where, you know, if I'm playing four or five weeks on, then by that fifth week, I'm really burned out. So I want, I'd rather just take the week off and not go into it with like, let's say 50% mental capacity and just kind of going through the motion and just don't have the fire versus, you know, if I play two or three weeks on week off, two or three weeks on a week off, that's kind of been my, my go-to schedule because I feel it doesn't give me too much time to burn myself out mentally. And like I, like I always explain to people is you have a mental well, you know, if you play, let's say by the third or fourth week, that mental well starts getting depleted. You got to, you know, go to Mexico and go drink margaritas on the beach and, or whatever your outlet is, or go find rocks or, you know, to, to refill that, whatever it is to re for me, it might be pickleball, go spend a a couple days and just don't touch a disc and just recover the mind. And just, and then eventually I come back, after those couple of days in Mexico or the couple of days hunting rocks or playing pickleball, that, that well starts to go from depleted all the way back. Like, cool, I can't wait to go play disc golf again, and I'm ready to for another couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the cycle that I've been sticking with that really works for me. Yeah, it seems like it's been just figuring out how to streamline what works for you into your schedule and, and all that. So, all right, that's the 2023 season. What are you looking forward to the most in the tournaments and stuff? We got a we got another Smugs World. So the yeah, end of it. yeah. So there's there's definitely a couple of things. I as much as I'm looking forward to Worlds, the Tour Championships, all the majors. I think you know that's a big thing. Obviously for me is is majors. I think I've won a lot of events, and you know that's something that I've you know like Champions mm-hmm. Cup slipped away from me last year. I got second to Chris. He played well down the stretch, um, but I was winning almost the entire time until the last couple holes and that's you know that's be pretty defeating for me uh just knowing how capable I am of winning but yeah so that's something that's in my head for sure uh, I want to make sure I want to lock down a major this year and I think yeah. that I I've obviously got what it takes and I know that mm-hmm. and it's just you know going out there and executing and I think that this year I'm stronger mentally more physically and if I'm if I'm healthy you know there's definitely some events last year that I played and I wasn't and I was injured or just had some you know, knee swelling, elbow swelling, whatever it may be. So I'm just hoping I can get it through a whole season. Yeah. And I, I train for it. I practice and I, you know, stretch and I work out and I do everything I can to really make sure that I can play a whole season without mm-hmm. injuries. So that's something that I'm going to really be focused on, obviously, in the off season and during the season is keeping up with my stretching routines yeah. and workout routines and making sure everything is firing on all cylinders. I hadn't heard from you recently as far as the, the Lyme's disease and, and have you had any flare ups recently? What is the front like on that? Yeah. So I'm doing pretty good on that. I mean, I think certain, certain times I do still feel flare ups, but it's, it's the type of disease that for me, w- the way I treat it and is it's getting better as the years go on because I'm taking precautionary me- measures, taking vitamins, supplements, and just lowering the Lyme disease load. So when you first get Lyme disease, it's running rampant in your body, attacking your joints, doing all this stuff. And I'm at the stage now where I've kind of got it, you know, my immune system's got it under control and it's fighting it off. And the Lyme counts are really low, so I don't get as many flare-ups. And when I do get flare-ups, they're not as bad because the Lyme count's lower than, let's say, 
couple years ago when I was really flaring up and got taken out of the whole tour yeah, and missed uh, USCGC in 2019 and yeah. and uh, and the tour championships that year. So that was very depressing. But I mean, just like anything, you take one step back and take two steps forward. So I think that that was the motto I went with when mm -hmm. changing my game plan with health and wellness. I it took a step back. Changed and changed your life. Yeah, it really did. The way that you eat, exercise, all of that now. Yeah, it does. It changes the way you look at life and the way you look at, like I said, health and wellness. So now I'm doing ice baths. I'm doing saunas and well, eating healthy. Yeah, and it doesn't change everybody either. You have to be a driven person that actually yeah. has some motivation. Like a lot of people would have let that disease ruin their lives. Broken you, them, yeah. Yeah, you fought it. You've made it a, a better thing. Yeah, it is, and it's tough. I mean, there's people that, luckily, I didn't get affected as bad as some. Like some people can go blind from it. So, really, the biggest takeaway, you know, as much as it's about me, I want to make it about the disc golf community too. Is that, you know, you really got to pay attention. I used to be Mr. Macho Man, like, hey, it's just a stupid tick, you know, flick that thing off and keep going. Like, but that's not really how it works. You know, if you get if you get a tick and it, it latches onto you, uh, I, th I believe it's like 24 hours it has to be in there embedded. But if you pull a tick off, I mean, you're you could potentially get Lyme disease and change your life. And I mean, it can it, people don't realize how bad it really can be. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it attacks your joints. It makes people bedridden, like they can't get out of bed for months. Mm -hmm. And then some people go blind, and, and some people, you know, like like me, have flare ups in their joints. And you basically, yeah. it's like someone's holding a blowtorch on your joints because that's what Lyme yeah. does. And I was staying with you in 2020 at Waco, the like the first or second event of the season, and. Man, it was just painful to watch, honestly. You were yeah. experiencing some you couldn't even really disc golf at that Yeah, point. no, it was it wasn't it was terrible. And and so really that's and, and that's the, the bummer part is that a lot of our courses are in tick filled places with long grass and bushes yeah. and all that. So really just the, my best advice is Awareness. is yeah, make sure you're trying you're spraying stuff on your bag, spraying stuff on the bottoms of your shoes where the ticks are gonna crawl to prevent it. I mean, that's the biggest thing. I've got it, and now it's going to be a lifelong thing where I'm going to manage it, and I'll be okay. But yeah. if anything, I can spread that to the disc golf world and, yeah. and let them know that to take precautionary measures. Not you know, not everybody's going to get it, but, yeah, you definitely better safe than sorry to make sure you don't get it. No doubt. No doubt. All right. Crazy disease. We'll switch subjects on Yeah. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you pay any attention to off-season signings and the comings and goings of the professional disc golf stuff? Have you seen... You know, like Simon, for instance. Yeah, so I definitely I saw his uh, his. I don't pay attention too much to YouTube, so I'll, but I'll tune into social media, and I loved the hype. It was cool to see Simon, Simon get get a bag. Mm. <laughs> he got a good deal, so I definitely paid attention to that. Uh, AB transferred to Discraft. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, there's some there's some cool moves. I definitely. I'm still a fan at heart. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm a player, but I'm also a fan. I like to see where people are going and see where friends are going. I like, yeah. I like seeing people do well. For sure. And and so it was cool to see AB Arizona boy. Yeah. Get a get a disc crap contract and that kind of made sense. I feel like with Yuli mm -hmm. and he's got, Paul both being there. Yep, he's got a big influence. Yuli's got a big inf influence on AB since Yuli's from from Air, yeah. from Arizona here. Yeah. And yeah, that was that was great. I think he just won eight tier locally. Actually, the Maricopa Open this last weekend. Did he win that? Nice. Yeah, he won. And so. Yeah, he's coming out, coming out hot. Dude, he's he's going to be, yeah. yeah, he, him and Gannon, yeah. in my eyes, the two young gun guns that really yeah. can make a splash and get some top five finishes and have chances to win week in and week out. Yeah, stretch and stretch junior. <laughs> yeah. Those guys are so oh, tall, yeah, man. gangly and gangle, gangle golf. <laughs> so crazy. Do you think, back to Simon real quick, do you think that he'll be able to repeat what happened last year? Do you, uh, what what do your what do you give him chances wise to win let's say I'll say the over under two elite series. <laughs> I'll I would take the under if I had to bet on it. Yeah. I would definitely take the under. I think it'd be a safe bet honestly. Yeah, it's hard to I repeat mean, what he did. It, he, I mean, yeah, Simon's an amazing player so you know, you're never going to underestimate shade. that. Yeah, yeah, but it's just, you know, the level of competition right now, the fact that he's changing discs, I mean, it's it's hard to win. It's hard it's so It is, man. It is. It's tough, but it makes it that much better when you do. I mean, that's the. It's it's more rewarding now to win than it ever was mm -hmm. in my career. I think that's a great thing for an athlete. We strive to win, and we want to get that winning feeling. Yeah. And that winning feeling is better than ever the way the sport's growing right now. Mm -hmm. And I think, but to answer your question, yeah, I I, would, I don't see Simon winning that many events. Uh, I think he's he's gonna be spending more time on, you know, YouTube doing more videos. It's funny. I actually was joking with him, and he'll 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 think it's funny if he hears this, but. Uh, <laughs> I told him a couple years ago, not that I am taking credit for it, but I'm like, dude, you got to stop filming videos. It's either you film videos or you play disc golf. If you want to be a top professional player, you got to do one or the other. 
And so he kind of stopped doing vlogs during the season. And last year, he's like, "Thank, that was the best." You know, I think I think he made like a comment like, "Oh, that was the best advice you ever gave me is yeah. to stop doing YouTube videos because just like anything, it takes away if you're spending time editing and filming YouTube, you're taking away time from getting reps in the field, practice putting, all that." So he definitely realized that, and I think he 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 uh, he definitely utilized that and was able to win four events last year, yeah. and that was that was awesome to see. Owes you a little cash, maybe. <laughs> At least to thank you. Yeah, I mean, he still has to go out and do it. You know, that's the hardest part is, yeah, you know, yeah. he had to go out and do it, and he had to go out and win. You know, just me saying something maybe – Kicked him in the butt a little bit, but he had to go out and do it. So it was all, it was all, he did, he, it was all him. Yeah. So what are your plans for traveling over to Europe? So, yeah, I'm, I, of course, always go to the European Open. That's always a great event. Yeah. It's uh, one of the, one of my favorite events to go to all year. I think that it's just, they've grown that, that event. The Finnish fans are just, mm -hmm. they show out. Mm -hmm. You they play that course really well, too. Yeah. It's it such a fun setup for you. Yeah. It does. It's a, it's a good tournament course. I think there's enough OB to really make you think. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing. Like, that's why USDGC is, is so respected in the professional community is because when you're nervous and there's OB and all the different variables that Winthrop and the Beast throw at you, it just makes it a perfect course because you're mentally – it tests your mental mm. your stamina and mental capacity just as much as your physical throwing ability. Mm. And I think that pairs those both together really well to the point where – yeah, all the professionals respect those events so much mm -hmm. and know how hard it is to have your mental game on point, have your physical game on point, and meet those together yeah, to no. be able to conquer the beast or conquer the Winthrop. Yeah, the beast specifically. You're going to have between two and 6,000 people, depending on if it's Sunday or Friday or whatever, but so many people watching you throw your shot at the island on 16. And if yep. you miss it, you hear the, oh. Yep. And then you got to walk back to your bag and stand there in the same spot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, that one specifically will give you nightmares. Definitely, it really is. And there's, there's no, you can't really lay up because I mean, there's, there's a drop zone or there's a layup area, but then that layup area, you still have to throw a 200, 250 foot shot into a tiny green with yeah. wind a lot of times. Yeah, it's totally not worth it. You see people do it sometimes, but that's when they're like missed it four or five times. They're running out of discs and stuff. <laughs> wow, people's tournaments end right there. Confidence, really. I wonder how many people have come to that hole and just like. Stop playing disc golf or something. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's yeah, one of those. Definitely a mental, mental tough hole, mentally tough hole for sure. So give us a couple predictions now looking at the 2023 season. Who do you see? All right, give me, let's start with breakout performance, and then we'll go most wins, and then we'll go majors after that. So okay. Give me a breakout performance, FPO and MPO. Okay, I think MPO, I'm going to go with Hebenheimer. Really? Yeah, he's a sleeper, I think. A total I think. sleeper. So a lot of people don't know that name, but I think after this year, he's he got a, he picked up a sponsorship with Latitude. Yeah. So I think that's going to be great for him. I think that he's really he's 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 a grinder. He put he puts time in. He he's he's a great thrower of the disc. He's starting Smashes to figure out his putt. Frisbees. He's a well rounded the player. Putt. You like yeah. the horseshoe putt? Well, he. <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> say said, I like it, he but said starting to figure out the putt. He's <laughs> well more so than he was in the past. 100%. Yeah. It's so pretty, I think he's percentage wise, he's making more putts, which is if he is, he's he can score. So I think dude. I think you're going to see some. Uh, I think you'll see some lead card, a lead card appearance. I'm, I'm calling it. He's nice. gonna make a lead card appearance at an elite series or a major this year. Yeah, and if you guys don't know them, this guy, he's he throws 600 feet backhand and 450 forehand. Yeah, he's very impressive. Smashes the disc. So Been he's playing a long time. Yep, he's gonna be the sleeper that I pick. And Jake then Hebenheimer, I like it. All right, FPO. FPO. Let's see here. I mean, I obviously that I think Kristen is gonna have a breakout year. I think she's gonna play really well. Like and how well? Like. I Over think under five elite series. Is five. Ooh, that's a that's a good number. I would. I, if it's I, a Vegas number. I it is. I think that's a Vegas number. Four and a half. I, uh, four and a half. Five. <laughs> uh, uh, I would have to say under. Okay. Yeah, she had a great year, and I I would say great, but not I would all think she's, time. Yeah, I mean, I think four. But the other thing too that's weird is with the European players, they don't play that many events. They can't stay here. Yeah, anymore. right. So it's right. so she had an absolutely amazing season for how many events yeah, she played, especially. Right. So it all depends on how many events she plays. Just that's visa also issues or whatever. Yeah, but win percentage wise, oh, yeah, it's it's insane. That and was her podiums, especially. She doesn't miss a podium. No, and and then of course, obviously the the major that she let slip away. That's you know. The way she played was she played amazing, and yeah. obviously I that, can't help but feel like that one. This is my personal. She opinion. got robbed not, for not sure. Rick, yeah, not yeah. UK, but okay, our opinion. She got robbed. <laughs> yeah, that one's unfortunate. She 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 
You could you could have say this that could have would have should have, but she straight up should have won that tournament. Yeah, and she got she just got robbed. That's all there is to it. That one felt regrettable. Yep. Yeah, definitely. So, right. but anyways, yes. So, what about a breakout person though? Somebody we haven't seen win yet. So this uh, would be like. Yeah, I would say like Holland Hanley. Boom. Yeah, That's were right. you the one saying talking about her? Yeah. The other day, yeah, she can. She's, she's good. So impressive. She is very impressive. Her so backhand, her forehand is super snappy. Mm-hmm. I know a ton of MPO players. They can't throw as good a forehand as her. Like a yeah. Ton. yeah. It's really good. Plus, she's got a great putt. So yep. I think she's, that's a great call. She's got a new sponsor. So, I mean, I think that's a variable. A lot of, I think she's got picked up by Discraft. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so, that's, that's, that's another variable that people don't realize is when you switch sponsors, it kind of creates that new fire. Like, hey, I got, I got a new sponsor. I got to show out and yeah. show these guys that I'm really worth it and try to build that contract. Yeah. So, that's something that's always in a player's mind. And, and when you switch sponsors, like she did with Discraft, she wants to she wants to play well. She wants to get her name on lead cards and, and really show Discraft that they made a good investment in giving her a contract. So, I think that's going to be in her mind in a good way to yeah. where she's going to have that motivation to really want to play well. And she, I think she will. I'm taking that bet too. I, I bet that she does as well. And she's got some good FPO teammates over there to help her mm-hmm. strive and drive to be better. Okay. All right. Jake Hebenheimer, Holland Handley. Love those two. Let's go with person who's going to win the most elite series events this year. And I, I can't pick myself, right? I don't know. I, you can, <laughs> but. I mean, I, I, I I would have to say I I'm I think I'm gonna have a good chance. You're set I mean, up nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Luck. But there's obviously a lot of other players that can also win some tournaments. I think Corey's gonna get a get a win this year. Ellis. Yes, yeah. Corey Ellis soon will be here. Uh huh. Nice. I think obviously obviously everybody knows it, but Gannon's gonna definitely win some events. Back to Corey real quick. Call it out. Which one do you think sets up the best for him? Because he's been close. Yeah. I mean, a handful of times last year. Yeah. So. So it's funny about Corey. I know him really well. You guys and stayed yeah, we we're traveling buddies. We air, we Airbnb up together. Yeah. We play a lot of practice rounds. He's actually amazing in the woods. So a lot of people saw his performance at Deglo and automatically assumed that he's an open bomber player. But he actually prefers the woods. Mm-hmm. So I would not be surprised to see him win like an event like like Idlewild. Mm-hmm. That course sets up really well for him. Yeah. He's really good in the woods. He's from West Virginia, right. and he's a very good touch player, as well as bombers. As you saw at Deglo, he, he was throwing bomb after bomb and giving himself a chance to win. Yeah, but he doesn't even have to throw the driver a lot of times. He can throw that buzz so far. He's just And he's, I mean, he's, yeah, obviously, when you have a skill set that nobody has, which is like his standstill, <laughs> standstill shots, he can throw them farther than people throw a full run-up. That's, that's wow. pretty insane. It's insane. So, I mean, that's anytime you can do that at the professional level, yeah. you can you can do something better than everybody in the entire field. Yeah. Which he can do. That's yeah. impressive. Yeah, his and body working in unison perfectly just creates so much power from a standstill. It's yeah, it's it's really insane. He it's, credits the uphill and the the elevation, I think. You just don't get a run up a lot of times in the woods courses is what he says. So. Yeah, cuz he's from West Virginia and everything's either downhill or uphill and you're not doing a run up downhill and you're, you know, it's a lot easier to throw a shot if an uh, uphill slope if you're if you're able to throw 500 foot <laughs> instead of doing the run up and messing up your timing because yeah. when you're running uphill, obviously you're running up slower than you normally would, so your hips get out in front of your arm and all that stuff can yeah. are variables that can happen. I could see him being due as well, man. He's knocked on the door so many times. He's he is definitely due. So, yeah, I've kind of taken him under my wing, and we practiced together, and I've really tried to help him mentally yeah. uh, because he's the type of player to where he can throw all the shots, and that actually can come back to haunt you because he thinks he has to throw the shot just because he can. Mm. And that's something I was talking to him working with him on is, hey, just because there's a tiny little gap in that, in that tree right there doesn't mean you have to go for it, even though you, you might hit that shot six or seven times out of ten. When you don't, you're left in a spot to where maybe you're getting an automatic bogey as opposed to just playing the safe shot. We all know you can throw that shot, Mm -hmm. but as a tournament golfer, we all know that the shot you can throw versus the the shot you should throw are sometimes two different things and can be the difference between winning and losing. Yeah. During that 2020 season, I know that Kevin Jones and I stayed with you a whole bunch, and you were working with him on his mental game, and we saw him win Vermont and then short time later won the Pro Tour Championship. You're helping a bunch of people <laughs> it's kind of you know it's not helping you necessarily but it really is at the end of the day probably yeah. fun to see your friends do well, well oh yeah i mean just like when Corey at d glow is it, it was great to see him go into a playoff and have a chance to win i mean i think that you know we're just over there playing practice rounds and i'm constantly trying to just share my knowledge with them mm-hmm. and you know like i said i'm not i'm not here to to claim and take it take you know take their credentials and what they've done away from them but i'm just here to to let to let everybody know that you know it's 
I'm able to help them a little bit yeah. and they're able to, it's awesome. Just, I get the satisfaction out of them personally, just going out and doing it mm-hmm. because you know, it doesn't matter how much you tell somebody to do something. It, they have to go do it. Yeah. You know, like cat's putt. She, you know, she won worlds. Yeah. And I helped her with her putt, but it, it, it's not me. I gave her the, the tools and I gave her my knowledge to help her change her putt and make yeah. it better. Right, right. And she went out there and did it. It was all yeah. on her. You know, she put in the work. Dude, she did put so, in the work too. So yeah, that's really, you know, with cat, with Corey, with all these different people, it's just, mm-hmm. it's just, satisfying to see them just go out there and do it for themselves you know yeah. and i'm just happy that they came to me and asked a lot of times they ask for advice and ask right. me hey what do you think and then and then once someone asks and shows interest yeah. then i am willing to go out of my way to help you um and i think that it takes it's tough sometimes to to put your ego aside and ask for help and mm-hmm. players that do that with me uh, i definitely reward them with all the knowledge that i've gained in my years of playing man that's it so cool Super cool. All right, Corey, you're picking to at least get one then. Um, you haven't, other than yourself, pick one more person who you think might. Okay, I would say, I mean. Like, let's just say. Uh, I think Gannon. Okay. Yeah, I, I think multiple-time winner. Yeah. I think that he's going to be a multiple-time winner. I think he's, if two, I think he's going to win at least two events, mm-hmm. probably. Super and consistent. Yeah. He's su- just putting himself in the situation, not yeah. finishing outside the top 10 almost He's, ever. And that's very impressive. I mean, it's one thing to win tournaments, and in, nowadays there's some respect to be had to when you're getting consistent top 5, top 10 finishes because it's hard. There's so many good players. And maybe, you know, 10 years ago it may not have been as respectable to just get a top 5 or top 10, but the streak he had last year, I think, what was it, like every tournament in the top side, the top 10? That's nearly. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> and. That's almost almost a more impressive stat than his USDGC win yeah, to for just real. Not have an off. Yeah, week. exactly. Because it's so hard, so hard, especially nowadays, to not have an off Man, week where people play so good week in week out. Like you yeah. didn't even play too bad, maybe. But yeah, I mean, I, I tried to justify some stuff. Like that as well. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go FPO then. Um, who's gonna win the most FPO? You said Kristen. Is that yeah. sticking with her? Yeah, I think her. I think I think I'm gonna stick with her for sure. Like I said, it, I haven't looked at her schedule enough to see how many events she's gonna play yeah, right. to give herself that chance. But I um, mean, obviously, it's gonna be me and Paige is gonna okay, figure wait, her stuff well, out. Give me this then. Yeah, Paige or Cat, who wins more Elite Series? I'll go Cat. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think. I mean, it's in, in FPO. It's there's a lot of there's a lot of storylines and a lot of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's it's really those three. Okay. Those three are the ones they're gonna win. Let's say if there's what is there twenty elite series and majors? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, we'll say that's the number. Yeah, they're gonna win fifteen of them. Yeah, right. You know, there might be a that couple group. here and there. Yeah, that group of three FPOs are gonna win fifteen, sixteen out of those events. And you know, there may be a Holland Hanley or a Missy Gannon here and there, but mm-hmm. those three players are gonna win majority of the events. Yeah, you're probably right when you say that. Okay, let's go to the majors. Are we gonna see? Like an upset, like a new person winning a major this year, or are we going to see domination by the top? I think it's a lot like tennis in majors because you see the experience pays off so much. Mm-hmm. And you see Djokovic, you see Nadal, you see all them. They're like longer typically too. We're yeah. playing five-round majors. They're playing five-set majors. Uh-huh. It's know. very comparable, I think. And I think that it just... You know, the those those are the events that you can almost lock in those three players because yeah. they got the experience. They've got mm-hmm. they've they've put themselves in those spots and they've learned how to ma- manage the situations and the mental ups and downs, the physical ups and downs that go with playing a major. And yeah. some of the other players don't have that yet. You know the you know the, the Mondahanos and and the and they're and they're not not taking not taking anything away from them. No, I'm just, terrific players. Yeah. yeah, absolutely amazing players, and they're just going to get better. But that's all stuff they're going to learn, mm-hmm. and and I think that that's something I'm learning. Everybody's learning. Yeah. And and so yeah, the majors are something that where experience is going to almost always beat out, um, I guess, talent. Yeah. You know because you know talent is great, but you got to have that experience to go with that talent. Yeah. So we got Worlds in Vermont, the USDGC. We got the Champions Cup, which you nearly took down last year. You like that course? Sets up good for you? Yeah, it does. I play really well there. It's obviously a wooded track that, you know, you have to have every every part of your game has to be good. Your sidearms, your scramble game, your your backhand gap shots, yeah. every part of your game. And you can – it's not like you're going to OTB where 
It's a distance contest, then you throw an up shot. Distance mm-hmm. contest, you throw an up shot. That's what the holes are. Yeah. Out at out there, it's it's you have to hit gaps. You have to. There's maybe a couple handful of open open ish holes here or there, but it's all about hitting those fairways, backhand sidearm, and mm-hmm. there's no. It's not just one style of golf. No, it's, totally. For sure, it's one of my favorite courses as well. My, it was actually my first top ten on tour. Was it uh, the Hall of Fame Memorial in 2019? That's awesome. Right at the end of the year. Okay, and then we go over to the Beasts. You're going to bounce around. You're going to play Norway, you said. Go to Finland. Um, all right, that sums up the 23-year. I guess what I really want to know, though, is, uh, is is some foundation stuff. I know that in 2022, you guys were able to get your discs and, and stuff to a ton of schools. Yeah, so we, we uh, the, the Saki Bomb Foundation First Putt Initiative was the first initiative of the year. And we're still doing that, so you can go to sakibombfoundation.org and go ahead and, and either you can sign up a local school, you can donate. Is some for like teachers or yes, yeah, for this parents? is yeah, it's for yeah, for t- mostly for schools. So yeah. if you if you have a school that your kid goes to or you know a teacher that works there, like I said, you can donate your time, you can donate money. It doesn't have to necessarily just be money, um, and obviously, you know that helps us. You know, just continue and give back, and mm-hmm. so we have the connections with all the schools. So when you, if you, if and when you do donate money or time, it's going to a great cause. Yeah. It's going straight back into the disc golf world, and that's what I'm doing as well. Last year, I gave away, I was getting eagles, birdies, and aces. Uh, uh, every ace and uh, every birdie and eagle that I got on tour, I was given a certain percentage. I forget yeah. what it was. I think it was like. 20, 20 bucks for an eagle and, you know, maybe like 10 bucks per birdie that I got on tour. You I got a up, lot of birdies. Yeah, I ended up <laughs> donating like 20-something thousand to my f- foundation through That's that. That's fantastic. So it just kind of keeps people engaged and keeps it fun. Yeah, yeah. And and then every ace, I also gave $1,000 to every ace that got hit on the pro tour on I mean, the Elite Series. Do you know how many that was? I think there was like 10. Okay. Yeah, That's 10 amazing. or 12, something like that. easy holes. No, it? we do not. Do not. I wasn't expecting right. that. I was like, look, at the beginning of the year, I'm like, all right, how much do I expect to give out? And yeah. I was thinking like, I don't know, maybe like five or six, like, you know, yeah. through like all the Elite Series and stuff. And there was like, nope, there was like, 15 or 12 or something. I'm like, oh, that got expensive for me. But that's all right. It went all to the foundation. (laughs) It's for the kids. So it's all good. Uh, But, yeah, that's definitely a big thing that we've been working on. And I've got good people involved in the foundation that have run foundations before and really know what they're doing to really just set me up and set my brand up to just give back. And that's really what it's all about. Yeah. You've streamlined your life. You've got the right people in the right jobs, knowledgeable experts and there's areas and keeps you to do what you do best play some disc golf man that's it we appreciate you letting us jump into your life a little bit talk to us about some things is there anything else that you want to say to people fans yeah no i just you know i'm thankful for for the disc golf media thanks thankful for for you guys here at gk and and allowing me to to be a part of the part of the disc golf world and sharing my sharing my story so Thank you guys, and we'll uh, look. I look forward to having a great season, and maybe come back in the off season. Let's do a recap for sure, man. And this specific occasion, we gotta thank you for letting us hang out in this amazing pad, man. It's been awesome. Thank you. All right, guys, signing off from Arizona. Thank you for being here with us. We'll catch you on the next one. See you next time, guys.